One, I'm young, I'm in my first term, and I've, I've been able to be a part of something bigger than me. If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. And next up we have Mr. Brandon Finney, and hopefully Mr. Finney will talk about some of the legislative successes that he has been able to accomplish this year in the New well. Hampshire General <laughs> Court. All right. Hey guys. Um, so I think I'm the most well, uh, not well known of the three that have switched parties. So I'd like to give you a little bit of background on me, kind of where I've come from and, and how I got here to where I am today. Um, so I, I've been kind of interested in politics since at least 2008 with the Ron Paul campaign. Um, he's the one that kind of opened my eyes and, and you know, got me interested in, in trying to change policy in federal and state governments. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Um, but it wasn't until 2012 um, when I actually voted for the Libertarian Party with the uh, Johnson campaign when, uh, when he ran the uh, first time. And then in 2016 when he, um, he, uh, he, he ran again. But what, what really got me inspired to run for office was I was um, overseas with my, my um, army unit uh, and I was kind of you know following some of the things that were happening back home. I really didn't like some of the policy changes that have been happening in the legislature. You know, for instance, they, they suspended the House rules to pass a $2 million spending bill to institute Operation Granite Hammer. Ooh. Ooh. And the reason that really angered me was because as someone who does not believe that drug offenses are actual crimes, I didn't like how the, the state government was spending taxpayer money to institute unconstitutional programs. And I didn't want to be um, an, you know, another one in the sea of complainers. I wanted to be someone that actually affects change in policy. So when I came home in 2016, I, I waited till the filing period opened. I, I paid my $2 to my city clerk and I became a, um, a candidate on the uh, Republican ballot. And please boo that. Boo! <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Jeb Bush, please clap. No. <laughs> um, the only reason I ran under their banner was because the LP did not have ballot access in 2016 until after the election, as you know, I, um, as a lot of us knew. And I didn't want to run as an independent because I wouldn't have a primary election. And, and uh, getting through a primary meant a lot to me. I didn't want to have to compete with two other candidates, so I think I had to run under a party I had the most agreement with at that time. And uh, so when I when I campaigned for office, I never actually really said like I'm a conservative, I'm 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 this, I'm that. I've always said I have the principles, of, you know, of a uh, of someone like in, um, in the Libertarian Party. Um, I never like hid my affiliations when I campaigned for office, and people still voted for me. So I've always tried to make my campaign about the things that I believe in policy-wise, and and you know, and my philosophies going forward have never been about being conservative meaning that I want to use the state to restrict people's um, you know, personal freedoms and their choices and to limit how they can spend their own money. And it's, it's kind of funny how, how people in that camp, um, they vet you under that kind of lens to being like, well, I don't like gay people, so I want you to vote against them. And I'm not that guy, so sorry I'm not that guy for you, but I've never changed from when I campaigned for office until the person I am today. And I still got elected in 2016. Um, and I was really happy to, to get elected to my first time ever, like ever campaigning for office, like go figure, you know, um, you know, being a 27, 28 year old, I don't know, I'm 30, I'm 30 as of last night, so. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of the old guy in the caucus. <laughs> so once I, I, I got elected and I kind of, you know, got, you know, I uh, got to the, the House session and started caucusing with the uh, GOP. I saw how fractious they were, and I saw how they could not get along on policy, and they, they were trying to push an agenda that was completely um, contradictory to what I got elected to do. And it wasn't until we started getting into the budget year that I was like, holy cow, these guys have no idea what they're doing. Um, and I was really tired of seeing the leadership in the GOP bully people in their party. Um, not to call you out, Caleb, but I saw the, the uh, speaker at that time bully you in front of my face. Yeah, that'd be great. And 
and it angered me. I, I wish I had words to say that I could say here at the podium. I wanted to say this at the time. But you can say them. No. <laughs> I'm on camera, Daryl. Uh, I plan to use this for a campaign stump, so um, I'm going to be nice today. But really, though, I, I didn't like how people were being treated in their own party. And I, so that kind of started the, the little worm getting on my brain, like, this might not be where I want to be, you know, going forward. Um, so after the governor that we currently have uh, instituted a budget proposal that spent $600 million more than the last two administrations combined, Ooh. Uh, that was kind of like, I'm out, guys. Like, I cannot do this. I had a meeting with Governor Sununu, and I was like, look, like, I think you're a cool dude and whatever, but, like, your budget sucks, man. Like, I'm not going to vote for this. You're, I, I'm not kidding you. I literally said this to his face. I had a meeting in his office, and I said, this is not what I got elected to do. I did not get elected to spend way more taxpayers' money uh, on frivolous social programs that can't be allotted by the free market in this state. And I said, I'm gone. Um, and he was sorry to see me go, and, and, but I have to give him credit for that. He, like, you know, he actually was, was pretty gracious about it. But I think the reason why he didn't really care is, is because I'm not really like a, 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 a like impactful member of their caucus. So I was just like, a, like a nobody first termer, you know? Um, so I officially switched parties after all of our house sessions were done in June of last year. I had a press conference on the state house steps and I've been on an amazing journey since then. Um, so my, my first term in office has really been about trying to be a bottom-up, um, like policy-changing team in the, um, in the legislature in this, in this state. So I've tried to focus not so much on the big picture items, but the little things that I know that I can get some support on. So all the bills that I've sponsored and co-sponsored, not, not just the election law stuff, but like the policy stuff of the marijuana, you know, uh, decriminalization and, and eventually getting it um, legalized in this state, even though, we, you know, we didn't win that battle, but I, I will promise it's, it's, it's going to come back again. Um, I actually looked at like some old, like obscure, stupid laws that our state's actually enforcing currently today. And uh, two examples was um, one law from the 1850s says that if you're some sign of, you know, some kind of like sideshow street performer, like, like a juggler or like a, a, a ventriloquist, or if you even like play your guitar. Puppeteers. Um, yeah, and, 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 and the, you know, the, the puppeteers. If, if you don't get a permit from the town or the city, not only do they fine you, but you can be charged uh, like as a criminal. Like you can be, uh, I think it was a class A, um, a, 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 a misdemeanor. And to me, having a, a, a criminal penalty associated with a nonviolent crime uh, was absurd to me. And that's the, you know, the kind of nonsensical and erroneous uh, laws in the state that I wanted to change. So I, I know I like, went like, out of past year to find some of the stuff. Um, I brought back uh, Max Abramson's uh, Collecting Seaweed at Night Mill, uh, and that died spectacularly again. Uh, it's just kind of funny what, what people think is a priority in this state. Um, I was able to convince uh, the House Committee to pass the bill, although their contention was um, they still want the local towns and, and municipalities to be able to enforce their own ordinances, so it might have been some kind of like home rule issue. But seriously, like, is this a prevalent issue where we have mimes on the street, for instance, like trying to perform and, and you know, cause problems in, 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 you know, in the public? No. Um, and it passed in the House, and then it got to the Senate, and then I, I, uh, I, I testified to the Senate committee, and then afterwards I was told that they killed the bill because apparently I didn't know what I was talking about. The Municipal Association, um, and they, they had supported my bill, and then uh, backstabbed me and said that we want to be able to enforce this law from the 1850s. Uh, so they killed my bill. <laughs> but as a success, I have two bills currently that have gone through the House. One bill was actually attached to a reform of some of the health code bill, uh, laws in the state, where they're trying to coincide with some of the federal issues, like for one, so I put in a bill to repeal the prohibition on the use of milk containers. <laughs> uh, 
it seems like you know, you know, like a non-important issue, but but you know, but if you think about it, our state has a really strong um, dairy cultivation um, and and an agricultural um, industry, and I didn't want. Uh, private farms and, and farmland owners to be fined or charged by the state for not using um, their own property on their on, on you know you know on their own equipment how they see fit. I trust farmers to 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 sanitize and use their own equipment properly. Uh, I, I don't think it's a role of the state to say that you're stupid and we need to enforce this. Um, and unbeknownst to me, the, the uh, my bill was actually attached to a Senate bill that was reforming the entire code anyway. And part of that bill was to repeal what I was trying to do. Um, so that actually has passed all the way through the legislature and I think that the uh, governor has already signed it. The other bill, um, HB 1285, uh, actually a lot of people keep giving me this like puzzle book when I, you know, when I tell them this, but in the state of New Hampshire, you cannot have a drink on stage if you're performing. It's actually a violation of liquor commission rules. And what's funny is that it's not even being enforced. How many people have you seen at a show, like at some, you know, bar who has some guy playing songs for you, like, and he's got a drink on stage, right? So their problem was that they want to be able to come in and say that um, you are an employee of the venue, so you that you know, you know uh, cannot consume alcohol while you're performing because technically you are an employee of the, of, like, of, the, um, of the state. And as someone who's played in a lot of bands and I've I played a lot like a lot of shows, uh, I am not an employee of, of your venue. Um, so my bill was not only to allow that but to change the RSA uh, uh, the, the the language to say that you are a private contractor as you've always been. You were able to work for yourself, and you were not subject to the, the labor laws of the state. And um, what's amazing about that bill was the Liquor Commission actually came in, signed in in favor of my bill, because they literally said, we don't have the people to enforce it. <laughs> so, what's, uh, so what's happened, uh, you know, you know um, to my shock and amazement, is not one person in, um, 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 in the House or the Senate has voted against that bill. Sorry. It passed unanimously in the House Commerce Committee and even attached an amendment to allow dancers to, to be included under the Entertainment Act. So, so if you're a dancer in New Hampshire, you're not like an employee of the venue that you might be performing in. Um, <laughs> so they can drink while they perform. Uh, so it went to the House, and it went to, to the Senate, and it passed unanimously out of the Senate. They'll be, be, be voting on it next Thursday, which is the second. So May 2nd, they'll actually be taking it up for a full uh, Senate vote, and I do expect it to pass, and that will be the one major success that I've had in office because I absolutely believe in protecting industries in this state, and the entertainment industry in New Hampshire is thriving. And I want to protect uh, the um, the you know bar owners that are able to provide the entertainment for the you know for the people in this state to not have to get fined up to a thousand dollars or more, or have the, uh, their ability to to sell alcohol revoked. Uh, and that was another big uh, concern for me. So that bill is going to pass. The legislative philosophy that I've had again is is just to find obscure and ridiculous laws in New Hampshire that don't make any sense, that infringe on the personal freedom that we all enjoy on a smaller scale because the big picture stuff, you know, seems to be for everybody else. My philosophy being in this party has always been what can I actually affect change on? And that's what I'm trying to prove to everybody in this state, that we may have switched parties and, and we may be fringe and obscure to them, but we've actually been able to do something important for everybody in this state. And that's the message that I'm going to carry um, going into the uh, you know, 2018 campaign cycle. Speaking of that, my, my future is to get elected to this position again. Um, I am putting a self-imposed two-term 
um, stay in the house and I, I want to stay through 2020 and then I want to get out. Um, and, and the reason for this is, you know, is because I want to prove it, you know, not, you know, not to, to everybody in New Hampshire, but everybody across the, you know, at the entire country that our party is viable, that, that we can get people elected. It doesn't matter how big we are. It matters the, the quality. You know, to me, it's always about quality and not quantity. Regardless, we are a small state of like 1.3, you know, uh, and, and, and uh, <laughs> million people and uh, we are a, a small political party in this state but I come here and I've been to other political conventions prior to this where I've spoken at and the numbers seem big because they're big states but compared to them they don't have the quality that I have here at home so again I thank all of you for coming here and supporting us um, so you know clap for yourselves please seriously <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to be funny to me. <laughs> um, you know, Caleb uh, might be the leader of our caucus, but he doesn't tell me what to do. <laughs> he might be an anarchist. <laughs> in, in fact, uh, it would be nice if he came to session more often. <laughs> I, I thank you for carrying the torch while I'm not there. <laughs> um, well, speaking, you know, since you weren't there, not that that really matters, but um, we actually voted as a house and not just as our party, but we were able to repeal the, the um, capital punishment in this state for the first time in 100 years. How, how amazing is it that we all could come together and have a tripartisan effort to get rid of an arcane practice and have us all be on the, the uh, you know the uh, same page and have it pass by a large margin um, where we actually believe collectively that the state does not believe in revoking life regardless of what you've done. They don't have the power or the right to take their life from you. Um, <laughs> and we haven't executed somebody you know, here since like the, like the 1930s. Um, and being able to, you know, you know, to be a part of that to me is, is so amazing and I, I cherish every moment of it because for one, I'm young, I'm in my first term and I've, I've been able to be a part of something bigger than me. And that's why I totally believe in what I'm doing, what Caleb's doing. We have to be here in, in 2018 and beyond. I'm asking all of you to be a part of our campaign Help us get to where we need to be, and help us win, and provide viability and validity to this party now. Thank you. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.